Welcome to the seventh teaching unit of the chapter How a Solar Cell Works. Today we will take a closer look at the p-n junction. We will learn what the band diagram of a p-n junction looks like and we will get to know the built-in voltage of a p-n junction. Let's first look at the band diagrams in the separated p and n regions. In the n region there are many electrons in the conduction band and hardly any holes in the valence band. The Fermi energy level EFN of the n region is just below the conduction band. In the p region, region there are many holes in the valence band and only a few electrons in the conduction band. The Fermi level EFP of the p region is just above the valence band. Now let's connect the two regions and consider the very short moment before the charge carriers start to diffuse to the opposite regions. You can see that the Fermi energy jumps at the boundary between the two regions. However, what you need to know is that the Fermi level in thermal equilibrium has to be constant across the entire semiconductor. It doesn't matter how large the semiconductor is, in thermal equilibrium the Fermi level always is constant across the entire crystal. Otherwise there would be a current flow in the semiconductor and we would not be in thermal equilibrium but we would have a perpetual motion machine. Therefore the Fermi energies equalize. Since the distance between valence and conduction band stays the same, both bands bend. Due to the band bending of the conduction and the valence band, the electrons in the conduction band of the P region can now occupy an energetically more favorable place when they move into the N region. Thus in the conduction band electrons drift from the P to the N region. Electrons in the N region face a big energy barrier that they cannot overcome. The reverse is true in the valence band. For the holes, the energetically more favorable states is the state with the higher energy. Therefore, the holes drift from the P to the N region. The width of the band bending corresponds to the width of the depletion zone where no free charge carriers are found or hardly any charge carriers are found. The degree of band bending is of special interest to us because it is directly related to the so-called built-in voltage. The built-in voltage is the voltage that is generated by the electric field of the depletion region. It is important for solar cells because it gives us information about the maximum voltage a solar cell can deliver. But what does the built-in voltage depend on? We'll try to answer this question. In general, the built-in voltage results from the potential difference between the N and the P region far from the depletion region. So, in order to calculate the diffusion voltage, we must somehow get a description of the electric potential. We'll get that by taking a closer look at the depletion region again. Inside the depletion region there are negatively charged space charges in the P region and positively charged space charges in the N region. Outside the depletion region the semiconductor is quasi neutral. If we look at the space charge density as a, as a function of distance in the semiconductor we can approximate that function by a step function. Integrating the space charge densities from the left to the right edge of the depletion region gives us the electric field E. The field strength is highest at the boundaries between the N and the P region and decreases linearly at the edge of the depletion region. Far from the boundary between the regions the electric field is zero. 
If we now integrate the electric field from the left to the right edge of the depletion region, we get, get the electric potential. So the electric potential depends on the density of the space charges in the space charge zone, or in other words, on the dopant concentration. The built-in voltage corresponds to the potential difference between left and right edge of the depletion region. To find a mathematical expression for the built-in voltage, we assume a semiconductor in thermal equilibrium. In this case, we can equate diffusion current and field current. As we have just seen, the electric field is a spatial derivative of the electric potential. So we substitute the electric field E by the derivative of d phi by dx and rearrange the equation. To solve this equation further, we use the so-called Einstein relation. The Einstein relation links the diffusion constant to the mobility of the charge carriers. It states that the more mobile the charge carriers are, the larger the diffusion constant is. We have already learned about the term kT divided by E in the chapter about doping. We call it the thermal voltage since this term is a voltage that is proportional to the temperature. With the help of the Einstein relation, the differential equation gets the following form. To calculate the diffusion voltage or the potential gradient, which is the same, between the P and N region, we integrate the equation from the left to the right edge of the P-N junction. The result of this integration shows us that the diffusion voltage is proportional to the logarithm of the coefficient of the electron concentration in the P region and the electron concentration in the N region. Since we do not know the electron concentration in the P region, we have to work with known quantities, like the dopant concentration. In the teaching unit about doping, we use the following equation. Electron concentration times hole concentration equals intrinsic carrier concentration squared. Let's assume that the hole concentration in the P region is equal to the acceptor concentration. This allows us to calculate the electron concentration by dividing the intrinsic carrier concentration squared by the acceptor concentration. For the electron concentration in the N region, we make the assumption that it is equal to the donor concentration. Now we insert both into the equation for the built-in voltage. The result shows us that the built-in voltage depends significantly on the dopant concentrations. Let us now assume typical values of a silicon solar cell and calculate the built-in voltage. The intrinsic carrier concentration for silicon at room temperature is 1.1 times 10 to the power of 10 per cubic centimeter. Typical dopant concentration are in the range of 10 to the power of 16 per cubic centimeter. Using the thermal voltage of 25.9 millivolt at room temperature, we get a value of 0.7 volt for the built-in voltage of a typical silicon solar cell. The built-in voltage also gives us an indication of the maximum open circuit voltage that can be achieved. Let's summarize what we learned in this unit. We have seen that in a PN junction, due, due to the electric field of the depletion region, the energy bands of the P and N region bend. The band bending is proportional to the built-in voltage of the P-N junction. Most importantly, we have seen that the built-in voltage strongly depends on the dopant densities. Thank you for your attention.